Hi everyone, Harry here to talk about the plot thickens in this messy, messy uh, sideshow, except now it's not so much of a sideshow in Fulton County. And Judge McAfee is going to hold an evidentiary hearing on Thursday that could turn into a circus and could potentially result in, to hear Judge McAfee say it, the disqualification of Fonnie Willis uh, to prosecute the RICO case against Donald Trump in which event I think we can just take it as a certainty that that case is off the boards for being tried uh, during the uh, before the, the election ends. All right. We knew, now let me take it back one more step. So this defendant, uh, Michael Roman, uh, who is... Definitely, we don't have to go into a, you know, a deep psychological evaluation, but he's definitely a kind of, uh, uh, Roger Stone junior varsity type dealing in different, uh, crazy misinformation, et cetera. He's the one who filed the, uh, motion saying, uh, Fonnie Willis has had a relationship with Nathan Wade and that is a problem. So that prompted, uh, the first few weeks of, um, salacious speculation until um, the response came in from Fonnie Willis with a uh, affidavit and all kinds of documentation attached from Nathan Wade. It said, yes, there's a relationship. So, okay, you got me. You got your uh, humiliation points. Very good. Michael Roman, uh, who had been joined by two other defendants, including most importantly, Donald Trump. And um, uh, there was a relationship. It Postdated, they say in the uh, the motion or the response, postdated his coming on to the case and suggested that it's over. That although that's a little um, murky, but you know, so there you have it. But there was no. There's been allegations out there of some kind of financial benefit, including pretty damn tenuous, like she pays him. Well, but no different from how other people are paid. They go on vacations together. You know, he covers the hotel or whatever, whatever it is. Somehow that's her feathering her own nest, or at least that's the suggestion. All right. To my mind, it all seemed at that point to basically be legally, legally dead in the water in the sense that there was no reason to think that uh, a the, the fact of the relationship gave rise to any sort of uh, conflict. And that's what matters for this um, prosecution. Obviously, a really boneheaded move, not the first, by people and prosecutors in matters of, of romance. But, you know, I, I, I was the head of a big office like that. The thought of being involved, getting involved with a prosecution with a fellow prosecutor is like, you know, beyond um, uh, inane, but it happened. Shit does happen like that. And in fact, it, it's useful that it does because there's law in Georgia making it clear that that doesn't constitute a conflict of interest. Indeed, uh, even relationships across the aisle uh, between a prosecutor and defense attorney has been held not to be a conflict of interest. So you would think that'd be it, especially because Roman obviously was just trafficking in, <clears throat> you know, um, uh, kind, kind of marketplace rumors. He's not, he's not in the, in the midst of this. All right. But nevertheless, he came out. So th it had already been the case that McAfee had, had ordered an evidentiary hearing. And even that seemed kind of puzzling. What do you need an evidentiary hearing for? Either Roman can substantiate these allegations or he can't. That should be the, the job. But if he, but in either event, how does it add up to a conflict? It was hard to see. But the plot has thickened and not in a good way for the case. First, Roman, joined by Trump, pushes back and says, that Wade in certain particulars is lying that, you know, when the relationship started, some details or whatever. Now, this matters, as I see it, even less under Georgia law. Again, you know, maybe there's some 
uh, reason for discipline and, and the Georgia uh, you know, code for public officials or for voting her out of office. But what what the fact that it, let's say it's a fact that they, you know, um, obfuscated when the relationship started, what that has with this case is um, completely um, obscure to me. But not to judge McAfee, who, who started this hearing, it was out an emergency hearing um, yesterday uh, where he heard motions to quash because Roman, knowing that it's an evidentiary hearing, has uh, papered subpoenas all over town, including Fonnie Willis, who he wants to call to the stand. And McAfee, uh, to my surprise, uh, I guess I have to say, has taken it very seriously and said flat out that it's possible uh, you need an evidentiary hearing because there is a difference in the evidence. You know, Roman is now saying whatever. It started on Tuesday and they say it started on Thursday. And McAfee says that could make a difference into whether or not she's disqualified. He says on the record, it's possible she needs to be disqualified. Now, he does, um, uh, you know, specify that in a way that's a, a little more anchored. What he says is it's not the fact of the affair. It's not the, um, uh, the, the qualifications of Wade. There's been some suggestion that, you know, he, he was hired in the first place because of the relationship. But if there's any kind of financial conflict of interest, as he, McAfee, reads the law, that might be a basis for actually um, disqualifying Fonnie Willis. I've looked at the law. I don't see that law, but McAfee, good judge, you know, well-schooled in Georgia law, and uh, my, uh, you know, research is more cursory, so maybe there's something out there that says it. But he then gives a kind of explanation about what's going to happen Thursday at this evidentiary hearing. And he actually said when the relationship started, if there was a relationship, uh, certain details are relevant for um, the supposed critical issue of if there's a financial uh, conflict of interest. So it sure seems as if he's going to put um, Roman should come to the stand first. And McAfee has said the rules of evidence apply. And it's uh, if, if that means hearsay, Roman's got nothing to say. I'm sure he knows nothing as a matter of personal knowledge. Somebody told somebody in the manner of these, you know, gossip chains for affairs. And he won't prove anything. If, that, if that's true and there's no hearsay, at that point, really, the hearing should end. Uh, because there's no allegation in front of him that's been substantiated enough to, to, to go forward. But by the same token, he shouldn't have said yesterday, maybe she has to be, uh, uh, recused or, or disqualified because he's got no showing yet in front of him. He's just got raw allegations. So it sure seems as, as if come Thursday, he's going to let Roman put on a case. Maybe let him call Fonnie Willis, maybe Wade, maybe others. You know, Wade's law partner who says that they started the relationship earlier, et cetera. In other words, a complete R-rated circus uh, that can only, I, it doesn't, it's not at all clear to me how it advances the case for a conflict, but it sure advances the talking point of the of Trump and allies that, you know, there's something uh, that there's misconduct here and Fonnie Willis is not a professional and uh, the thing should be dismissed and, you know, all, all the hay they want to make with it. It seems like they'll be able to make at least based on what McAfee is now saying. So I wanted to give you a sort of preview of that, but fasten your seatbelts for Thursday for what as he at least put it yesterday, is going to be, a, you know, an ugly mess of a, of a hearing and a sort of soap operatic one about when did the relationship start and the like because of its ostensible relevance, which I think is pretty clear. I don't see uh, to the question of whether she needs to be disqualified because of a conflict. Oh, and I should add this because because McAfee did 
or an appearance of a conflict, always the sort of, you know, residual in any conflict case. Oh, okay. But it looks to the average person that there's a, an appearance of a conflict and you pull the trigger based on that. And it's very much within the discretion of the trial court. So the case is imperiled now, uh, though I wouldn't expect him to, to recuse her, but even if he doesn't, there's the, just the mess of it and the kind of, you know, loose, association with improper behavior that will now embed itself in the public uh, mind. Uh, even if, if McAfee doesn't do anything, she may be required, Willis, to, for example, discharge Wade from the case. You know, it ain't going away. And the evidence you're hearing is only going to inflame matters. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.